Women Vote in the Digest Poll The Literary Digest, August 19, 1922 They're wetter than the men, announced a surprised tally taker in the counting room of the Literary Digest after making up the tabulation of the first scattering returns in the Digest special poll of 2,200,000 women of the nation. Since that time, however, the poll has shown a consistent tendency toward dryness, until, with the tabulation of some 20,000 votes shown in summary in the middle of this page, the prohibition sentiment appears to be not far below that of the main poll, shown on the following page. The percentages stand a little more than 65 against the continuance and strict enforcement of the 18th Amendment and the Volstead Law in the women's poll, and slightly more than 61.5 against in the main poll. It must be taken into consideration, as affecting the continued wetness of the women's poll, that the vote so far comes chiefly from eastern states, which are commonly considered to be damper in sentiment than are those of the Middle West, Northwest, and South. While New York, in the small returns from the women's poll so far received, gives 1,644 for enforcement, to 3,202 for modification, and 2,239 for repeal, a total of more than 3 to 1 against the present laws, the first few returns from Kansas show 136 for enforcement, to 58 for modification, and 22 for repeal. The first scattering votes from California, on the other hand, the only far western state thus far represented in the returns, show 37 for enforcement, to 73 for modification, and 44 for repeal. The women who are now being polled appear, for the most part, on the voters' lists of the country, whereas the main digest poll, as previously explained, is founded on telephone lists, and several publicists have argued that the general voters' lists would show a slightly less responsible class of citizens, and therefore one more likely to favor wetness and the soldier's bonus. On the other hand, it seems to have been generally conceded that a poll of women would produce drier sentiment than a poll in which men predominate, as is true of the main poll now being taken by the Digest, whose present status is shown in summary and in detail on the next page. As has been explained previously, the women's poll of 2,200,000 ballots is being distributed all over the country, after a careful figuring of percentages, so that the returns may fairly balance as between men and women voters the complete referendum of 10 million voters which is being taken. While the main poll this week shows a slight increase of dry sentiment, equivalent to at least one half of 1%, the factory polls continue to be strongly in favor of less stringent liquor laws. The most recent factory poll, taken in a branch establishment of a large automobile manufacturer with branches throughout the country, shows the following result. This poll ranks with the wettest of those so far taken, showing approximately 16 to 1 against bone dryness. Combining the four polls which have been taken among factory workers, the result runs... Wayne Wheeler, general counsel of the Anti-Saloon League of America, believes that recent congressional primaries are much more significant than is the digest showing. He presents the following statement. Your last tabulated vote of Detroit factories, 6 to 1 wet, shows the misleading character of this referendum. Michigan voters recently defeated a beer and wine amendment by 209,000. The results of the primaries to date also show that there is no such sentiment for beer and wine as indicated by the Digest poll. Twenty states have held primary elections. Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Carolina, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia. Thirteen United States Senators have been nominated in 12 states, two nominations being made in Pennsylvania. In the 20 states, 217 congressional districts have nominated candidates. 191 congressmen were renominated, of whom 156 have voted for prohibition enforcement, and 35 against it. Of the new nominations, about one-third are considered wet or doubtful. In many of these states, the dominant issue in the campaign was a beer and wine amendment to the National Prohibition Act. The wets have about held their own in the wet districts. Only one dry congressman has been defeated by a recognized wet candidate. On the other hand, the dries have made gains in both House and Senate. In some districts, the wets have not polled more than 5% of the vote. In Missouri, with the dry vote divided among four candidates, Mr. Sachs, the beer and wine candidate on the Republican ticket, was defeated by a large majority by Mr. Brewster. 
Mr. Reed was renominated, but this adds nothing to the wet forces as he was always on that side. The only accurate and trustworthy referendum on the issue of beer and wine is in the primaries or in a general election, where all the people have a chance to express their opinion. In his statement that, Michigan voters recently defeated the beer and wine amendment by 209,000, Mr. Wheeler doubtless refers to the vote of 1917, five years ago, when, according to figures presented by the Anti-Saloon League of New York, Michigan voted 207,529 against beer and wines. In the case of the various congressional primaries, even a number of the more dry-minded commentators agree, it is very difficult to disentangle the prohibition issue from the other issues involved. The New York Evening Post, which has never been accused of unfairness to the dries, observes editorially that the primaries are less significant of prohibition sentiment than is the Digest poll. The writer continues, Here and there, we hear of the prohibition issue playing a part in a campaign. Reed in Missouri and Ferguson in Texas were stamped as wet candidates. In Ohio yesterday, voters were not allowed to forget that Atlee Pomerine is wet and Simeon Fess is a dry. In New Jersey, Frelinghausen is as outspokenly dry as Edwards is wet. But in nearly all the primaries, this issue is subordinated to others, and what part it plays in the result is difficult to tell. The wets are anxious to keep their flag flying but they know that while there is a bare chance of making the House Democratic this fall, there is not the ghost of a chance to make either House or Senate even moist. Granted that the prohibition question is not settled, it is good to see its settlement kept in the political arena. If the law is bad, its opponents should try to repeal it, not to break and nullify it. No one can object to a straightforward campaign to modify the Volstead Act but every good citizen will object to efforts to discredit it by encouraging violations and withholding appropriations for its enforcements.